had a, a steer tire blowout, that kind of gave me a heads up when it when it started happening. I knew immediately what the problem was. I, re I remembered that from like, I don't know what, 10 months ago or something like that. We, we did that on the simulator. Hello everybody and welcome to the joy of trucking. So this is the day after the blowout. We are leaving Albuquerque on I-40 heading west. And we're gonna talk to Kevin about uh, what to do in case of a blowout, what his thinking was. Uh, it's a good learning opportunity. So stick around, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you like traveling with us and learning about trucking. And now, without further ado, here's Kevin. Hi everybody, welcome back to the joy of trucking. Um, looking at yesterday's video, you know we had a blowout and uh, there's some things maybe we can take away from that. So hit that subscribe button, sit back and I'll tell you a story. One, one thing about this, it, it brings a lot of things to mind. Going all the way back to school and the time with my trainer, I noticed my trainer always said, yeah, keep two hands on the wheel. Uh, and even if you have to, you know, grab a drink or scratch your head or whatever you're doing, keep that other hand close to the wheel, you know? Don't be sitting on your hand, don't be driving, holding a cup and stuff like that because things happen fast and you want that other hand on the wheel. It gives you a faster reaction time and it gives you the strength to deal with something if you really have to. It took two hands to get the truck under control. When that tire went, it pulled hard to the left. And if I didn't have two hands on the wheel, there would have been a split second of, of less control that could have made the difference between life and death. And you wanna be aware of your surroundings at all times. I was really lucky in that case that there was nobody in the lane beside me to the left when that truck pulled over. I was half into that lane before I could wrestle it back into my lane. Somebody could have gotten killed. And then finding a place to pull over to the right. Now, like I'm doing 65 miles an hour on I-25. I'm in the middle of three lanes. So once I got it under control, I knew I had to get off the road fast and I had to be aware of, you know, moving into the right lane if anybody was there. So I'm checking mirrors really fast and also aware that whoever's behind you might be really close, might not be able to stop fast enough. I hit the four way flashers right away as well so that people behind you are aware that they gotta, they gotta watch out because something's going on. So moving the truck then off to the, off to the side of the road, the next thing is you're looking really fast to find a safe place to pull it over because you are not on a tire anymore. You're riding the rim at this point and you're, you're in a situation that's gonna cause a lot of damage to the truck and you still have very little control. You could still lose control, flip the truck or run somebody over or something. I have to say, at, at Werner, they, they do a lot of training. You know, we have quarterly training programs on the computer, followed up by time on the simulator. And one of my episodes on the simulator actually involved the blowout of a steer tire. So in a way, I had, I had a bit of preparation for this. The sensations that, that occur on the simulator were exactly the same as what happened on the truck. The, the hard pull to one side on the wheel, the vibration in the wheel and even in the seat um, were what you experience at that moment. And I knew in an instant what, it, what had happened and what I had to do. So it was good to have that training. And uh, I don't know if you, if you caught it in the video, but uh, I think that, that simulator episode was like 10 months back and it, it was still with me. So you had a little bit of muscle memory. You had a little bit of, a, a little bit of an idea of what to expect and, and what to do. That was really good. Other thing, uh, okay, once you're in that safe that safe place, you know, that you find on the side of the road, or uh, I was able to actually get off the highway and onto a service road that runs parallel to it, then you still gotta be very, very aware of what's going on around you. Cars are zipping by. Get out the passenger door. Don't get out the driver's side door because then your butt is out there and cars are coming by and maybe take you out. Put on your safety vest before you get out, all right? and get out the passenger door and put your triangles out right away. They say you've got 10 minutes to do it. You know, do it as soon as you can and make sure they're far enough back that people know to look out for you. And I, I wasn't on the shoulder of the road. I was actually in a lane. So I put them back and, and kind of angled them out too so that people would have to steer around them and steer around the truck. You want to call for uh, 
roadside assistance from the company, of course, but you've got to know what to tell them. So you're out of the truck, you've got to look at the damage, you've got to assess it. Is it a blown tire? Did something else go wrong? Did you, you know, blow some air hoses or uh, destroy something else in the truck that's going to keep you from moving afterwards? Because instead of getting somebody out there to just change the tire, we might have needed a tow truck. Because even with a tire, the truck wouldn't run. So you've got to assess the damage too. And then you got to call roadside assistance and you got to uh, make sure that they call the contractor. Then they send you a message saying they contacted a contractor to come and, and do the repair and they'll send you a number of that contractor and get in touch with them because what's happened to me in the past is uh, i've waited an hour and then they still didn't show up and i called and they had the wrong location they were somewhere else <laughs> so it was another hour before they showed up so give them a call as soon as you get that number and say you know this is exactly where i am and in which direction and and you know any any special because i wasn't i wasn't you know, in a in a certain spot that I could identify easily over the over the communication tablet. So I was giving verbal instructions to the driver and get an ETA from them. You know, like I, oh, I'm on another call. I'll be three hours or whatever. At least you know what to expect. You know, make sure you're on your on your clock that you're off duty because you could be there for hours. Right? Maybe you want to split your clock and get going again after. Who knows? Another another small thing. If you if you have a passenger, I don't know if Tanya, I think she mentioned it on the video. You don't need distractions at a moment like that. Her first uh, instinct in something like that is to scream and exclaim and and you know react physically or or with sound to what's going on. And she was very considerate in keeping a lid on it so that I could deal with what I had to do. I I don't multitask very well, so I wasn't going to be able to comfort or calm her in that situation. Uh, I'm not very good at that anyway, but that would have been one more thing on my mind. So I'm, I'm really glad that I didn't have to deal with that. So all in all, you know, keep safety in mind all the time. And you're driving a big, massive, heavy machine. Keep the safety of others around you in mind all the time too, you know, like be aware of what's around you all the time. Be ready for things. Be focused. Be aware. And, uh, and be grateful. I mean, after that happened, we were like, wow, that could have been a lot worse. Like, count your blessings, be grateful, learn from the situation, and thank your lucky stars. <laughs> so, now we're gonna go on with the ride. So, we'll continue on our, on our trip to California. And the next day was also eventful, although not quite as dangerous. So, <laughs> let's, see, let's see what happens next. And remember, uh, trucking is like a box of chocolates never know what you're gonna get. Bye for now.
welcome to California. Thanks for joining us today in this video. We hope that Kevin's discussion of the blowout helps you be prepared in case you ever encounter that situation, which we hope you don't. But if you do, we hope it helped. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, put your comments and questions below, and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. With love from Kevin and Tanya. Bye.